Good morning. Topic of today's lecture is autoimmunity. All of you know about immunity. What is immunity? Anybody can answer. What is immunity? It is the resistance exhibited by the host towards the microorganisms or their products. Autoimmunity, meaning of autoimmunity, auto means self and immunity means protection or self-protection. So literally it means self-protection but actually it is injury to self. So it is a condition that occurs when immune system mistakenly attacks healthy body tissue. Classically, immune system will not affect any self-antigen and, uh, and tolerance is developed against the self-antigen. So immune response is not produced against the self-antigen. Condition where the immune system is mistakenly attacked that will affect healthy body tissue, it is called as autoimmunity. This concept was initially described by Ehrlich immunologist he observed that when goats are immunized with rbcs of other goat goat will develop antibodies against rbcs of other goat but not against their self rbcs so this is called as horror autotoxicus explained by Ehrlich. so what is autoimmunity how it is defined it is a condition in which structural or functional damage is produced by action of immunologically competent T lymphocytes or antibodies against normal components of the body. So they, either there is a structural damage or functional damage which is produced by antibodies or lymphocytes against the normal components of the body. It is called as autoimmunity. This autoimmunity having different features so autoimmune diseases are those where the autoimmune process is responsible for pathogenesis in these diseases we can see there is increased level of immunoglobulin we can demonstrate auto antibodies there is deposition of immunoglobulin or their derivatives at the site of lesion Lymphocytes and plasma cell infiltration can be seen at the site of lesion. These patients are benefited by the corticosteroid and immunosuppressive therapy. Usually more than one lesion is present. You can get genetic predisposition or history from the patient. So genetic predisposition towards autoimmunity is seen. Incidence is higher among females and these conditions are usually chronic conditions. They are non-reversible. Autoimmune disease can affect any organ or any organ system. So almost all the organs or tissues can be affected by autoimmunity. What are different mechanisms of autoimmunity? First mechanism is hidden or sequestered antigen. Some antigens, they are present in a closed system. Called as hidden antigens or sequestered antigens. For example, lens antigen of the eye. Lens antigen of the eye is covered by lens capsule. So, tolerance is not developed against the lens antigen due to trauma or due to infection. Whenever there is a release of lens antigen in circulation, there is immune response produced against lens antigen. This is example of hidden antigen. When hidden antigen is released into circulation, immune response is produced. Second example is called as sequestration in time. Sperms, they are produced at the time of puberty. So sperms, they are not exposed to immune system in fetal life. So when sperms, they are released in circulation, they are recognized as foreign antigens and immune response is produced. This can happen in mom's infection, which can cause damage to seminiferous tubules, release of sperms, and we can see mumps or colitis. It is an autoimmune condition. One more example is thyroglobulin, which is an 
hidden antigen. So first mechanism of autoimmunity is presence of hidden or sequestered antigen when damage to this hidden antigen or sequestered antigen occurs. They are released into circulation and immune system will mount an immune response against these antigen. Next mechanism is there is antigen alteration. Self antigens, they are altered. Altered either by physical, chemical, biological factors or by mutation. And a new antigen is produced called as new antigen. These antigens may be altered after exposure to physical agents like irradiation, exposure to light, or exposure to cold. Photosensitivity or cold allergy, these are the examples of immune response to auto antigen after exposure uh, self antigen after the exposure to light and cold. Antigens can be altered by chemicals like drugs or infections, viral factors like infections, viral infections. So with self antigens, they are altered by these factors. New antigen is produced and immune system will mount an immune response against these newly formed antigens. Third mechanism is presence of cross-reacting foreign antigens. Some organisms, they share antigens with the host tissue. Because of sharing of antigens by different organisms and host tissue, with repeated infections, immune system will produce immune response against these organisms, eliminate these organisms, but that can affect tissue which shares the antigen. For example, streptococcus with uh, group A, uh, group uh, M, M0 type with heart muscle, nephritogenic strains of streptococci with renal glomerula and human brain with sheep brain. With repeated streptococcal infections, antibodies are produced against streptococci that will damage heart muscle. So, this can be seen in rheumatic heart disease. In some organisms, epitopes are present with identical peptide sequences, same as that of host tissue. Because of presence in, of these epitopes with identical peptide sequences in different tissues and organisms, the same mechanism, immune system will produce response against organism that will affect that tissue. For Shigella flexmary with HLV27, Mycobacterium tuberculosis with joint membranes, and Oxacidi virus and myocardia. This is a slide which shows this group based tryptococci. We are carrying, carrying this and protein because of sharing of antigens between the cardiac tissue and streptococci. Antibodies produced against streptococci can damage heart muscle or heart, heart tissue. Next mechanism is presence of forbidden clones. According to clonal selection theory, during embryonic life, clones of cells that produce antibodies against self antigens, they are destroyed. These clone of cells which produce antibodies against self antigens, they are called as forbidden clones. They are destroyed during embryonic life. If they persist, that can lead to autoimmune condition. T and D cell defects. When, whenever there is enhanced T helper cell and decreased T suppressor activity, it can lead to autoimmune condition. It can happen when there are defects in thymus, defects in stem cell development or macrophage function. Usually, antigen will activate only its corresponding B lymphocytes to produce antibodies. Some stimuli can cause non-specific activation of B lymphocytes leading to production of antibodies like IgM antibodies are produced. Stimuli which can lead to non specific stimulation of B lymphocytes include chemicals like tumor capture ethanol, bacterial products like PPD, lipopolysaccharide, 
enzymes like trypsin, antibiotics like mistatin, mycoplasma, Epstein Barr virus, or malarial infection can also lead to non specific stimulation of B lymphocytes, which leads to production of immunoglobulin. So, you can see increased level of immunoglobulin in autoimmune disease. So, you can classify these autoimmune diseases as pneumocytoritic, localized, which are organ specific, and systemic, which are non organ specific. These hemocytolytic diseases, again, they include autoimmune hemolytic anemia, which can be of cold or warm type, cold IgM antibodies are produced, paroxysmal, paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria, primary atypical pneumonia, trypanosomiasis, and hepatotubular are the examples where the such type of antibodies are produced, and warm antibodies are produced after treatment with sulfonamides, antibiotics or alpha methyl dopa. Because of these antibodies, there is premature destruction of RBCs. These antibodies, they will coat RBCs and leads to premature destruction of RBCs leading to anemia. In autoimmune leukopenia, antibodies are produced against leukocytes causing premature destruction of leukocytes. In thrombocytopenia, antibodies are produced against platelets leading to destruction of platelets. Second group is localized autoimmune diseases. So the, which are organ specific antibodies are produced and that can lead to damage to that particular organ or tissue. For example, Hashimoto's disease. In Hashimoto's disease, antibodies are produced against thyroglobulin, cell membrane, uh, microbial antigen, so different thyroid proteins and cell. So antibodies that are produced against thyroid protein and cell. Because of these antibodies, there is interference in the iodine uptake, which leads to decreased production of thyroid hormone, leading to hypothyroidism. Second condition is Graves' disease. In Graves' disease, antibodies are against PSH receptors, thyroid stimulating hormone receptors. This antibody production is not regulated, so there is long acting thyroid stimulation. So over stimulation of thyroid, it leads to production of increased amount of thyroid hormone leading to thyrotoxicosis. In Addison's disease, antibodies are directed against adrenal cells, which can damage adrenal cells, leading to insufficient amount of hormones like cortisols. In autoimmune arthritis, either sperms or adrenal cells can be Affected with the antibody production. Antibodies can cause clumping of spermatozoa leading to male infertility. In myasthenia gravis, antibodies are produced against acetylcholine receptors. These antibodies can bind, uh, this, this can block this binding of acetylcholine to acetylcholine receptors, and which leads to progressive weakening of skeletal muscles. Autoimmune disease of the eye may affect lens protein leading to intraocular inflammation or it may cause antibody production against IV sensitive body. Sympathetic ophthalmia, where there is inflammation of uveal tissue in opposite eye. This is a photograph showing myasthenia gravis patient. There is a progressive weakness of skeletal muscles, so loss of muscle control, which you can see in this photograph. In pernicious anemia, antibodies are produced against paratrocytes and gastric mucosa, and vitamin B12 binding site of intrinsic factor. Binding of antibody to intrinsic factor will block absorption of vitamin B12, which is required for synthesis of this circulatory system cells, hematopoiesis. So that will lead to pernicious anemia. In Gupasha syndrome, there is an antibody production against renal and lung basement membrane, which leads to inflammation and progressive damage, kidney damage, as well as pulmonary hemorrhage can be seen. Autoimmune diseases of the skin, antibodies are produced against different components of skin, like intercellular substance, where the antibodies are produced 
condition is with the pain figures for ladies. Antibodies are produced against dermal epithelial junction and fibrous pemphigoid. And specific antibodies, they are not identified, but this condition is considered autoimmune. Is dermatitis herpetiformis. So these are all localized autoimmune diseases. Third group is in classification is systemic autoimmune diseases. Clemperer in 1942 identified that in autoimmune diseases is connective tissue or collagen tissue is affected. These are collectively now called as collagen disorders. So common systemic autoimmune diseases are SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis. In SLE, which is a chronic multi-system disease, antibodies are produced against various tissues and organs of the body. So antibodies can be seen against nuclei, intracytoplasmic cell constituents, immunoglobulins, thyroid tissue, other organ specific. So various organs, they can be involved in SLE. Characteristic feature by which we can diagnose this condition is by demonstration of LE cell, which is a neutrophil that consists of pale homogeneous body. We can diagnose SLE by immunofluorescent test for anti-nuclear antibodies, or we can perform radio immunoassay or ELISA for detection of anti-DNA antibodies. Other systemic conditions. Rheumatoid arthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, there is systemic symmetric involvement of joints. There is polyarthritis with muscle wasting and presence of subcutaneous nodule. It is associated with serositis, myocarditis, vasculitis, and other disseminated lesions. We can diagnose this condition by detection of RA factor, that is a rheumatoid factor. Usually, this RA factor is IgM immunoglobulin. And it acts as an antibody against FC fragment of immunoglobulin. So we can say it is an antibody against antibody. It is R factor is an antibody against FC fragment of immunoglobulin. Polyarthritis not also is a condition where there is involvement of medium-sized vessels, which can lead to thrombosis, hemorrhage, and gastrointestinal bleeding. Syndrome is another systemic autoimmune disease where there is involvement of salivary glands and conjunctiva, so there is dryness of mouth because of involvement of these uh, glands and conjunctivitis, keratoconjunctivitis because of dryness of lacrimal gland. Some conditions, autoimmune process is temporary or transitory. Whenever the stimulus is removed, there offers spontaneous cure. This can happen after drug therapy. So, patient may develop anemia, thrombocytopenia, or nephritis after drug therapy. If that particular drug is removed, we stop that treatment, there offers spontaneous cure. This condition it is called as transitory or homo process. Before that, before ending lecture, I want to show you a slide. Slide. You're supposed to answer these uh, questions related to this slide. Can anyone identify this slide? This is a tissue section of nasal polyp. Anybody can identify the fungal infection? So this is a tissue section stained by hematoxylin and leucine stain of a nasal poly, which shows plenty of sporangia. The sporangium consists of an sporangia. So a single sporangium or endospore it consists of sporangia, and this is characteristic feature of rhinosporidiosis. What is cause of rhinosporidiosis? Anybody? Rhinosporidiosis is caused by rhinosporidium sebae, cause of subcutaneous.